And we're back, Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba, Chapter 195. The battle rages on. Holy potato monkey, Nezuko has arrived. But I'll get to that later, let's start with the cover art. Can I just say how happy I am to have Tamiyo's cat grace the cover page, Healing Zenitsu? I'm glad to see that little thing up and about after its minor decapitation a couple of chapters back. Don't at me dog stand, I'm a cat person, you hear? The first two pages this week are doing my favourite thing ever, having Muzan refer back to his fight with the original Breath of the Sun user and continue to build him up as the OG god tier demon slayer. As cool as Tanjiro is, having flashbacks of the fallen Sunbro Yorichi described to us by Muzan seems to trigger the heck out of his BTSD, and makes my loins ache for fresh fight scenes with Yorichi via flashbacks in future chapters, as unlikely as that is. Call it a throwback or foreshadowing, but where we had Muzan confront Tanjiro just after the boy's revival asking, which of the two of us are the real demon here? We have this mirrored onto Yorichi, however with a more pained and distressed look on Muzan's face, declaring that Yorichi was unequivocally, undeniably, the demon. Yorichi again painted as leagues above everyone in terms of strength and remains goat status. And Muzan's tattered body is evidence alone. Dude should have been wearing his SPF 50 sunblock because the scars left behind are burning Muzan's skin like sunburn. Muzan has showed us countless times in the past his prowess with cell manipulation and hiding his scars was just one facet of this. Though with the toll accelerated aging has taken on his body, he can't keep up. And each of these moving scars is just a bullseye for Tanjiro to slice up. I'd love to see this fight adapted into a rhythm arcade game or maybe a VR headset game where you slash away at Muzan. I'll make a Kickstarter. Now, Tanjiro isn't the only Demon Slayer in this fight. We have Igoro playing support and I'm thinking, really, Igoro? I know we had his sad backstory not too long ago and he's looking for an upward trajectory in his own character arc, but he doesn't really have a close relationship to Tanjiro. Feels like a weird choice to have him share the podium with Tanjiro after they cross the finishing line. And by that I mean obliterate Muzan. And because I'm thinking Igoro to be out of place here, I'm calling it now. Igoro is so dead, that death flag is waving. But he's spared, for at least now, because Muzan is fucking booking it. He's bolted. I'm conflicted whether this is true to his character or not. On the one hand, he thinks so little of this pesky human trash that he, the greatness that is Muzan, transcender of humanity, would never turn tail to them. Conversely, his motives centre around survival, immortality and at a base level clinging to life. And that he does, he turns his back to the Slayers and gets the fuck out of dodge. Here's one for you guys, did this jump out to you as a parallel between Muzan and Tanjiro when you saw this panel? Muzan treading on the limbs and bodies of the fallen demon slayers, the disrespect. And the contrasting panel I'm talking about is way back in the drum demon battle. Cast your mind back as Tanjiro was just about to slice the drum demon up. He was respectfully dodging the drum demon's poetry on the floor, making sure not to step on them. And here we have Muzan stomping through our poor, poor cannon fodder. What an asshole. Though payback comes in spades as Igoro gets Muzan with a gnarly piercing attack, stabbing through Muzan's throat. And just before that we had Tanjiro unable to close the distance between them as Muzan sprinted off, so he instead switches it up and throws a volley of swords at Muzan. I've just finished the Fate Stay Night series so I was thinking holy shit he's doing a Gilgamesh, well this is sick. And even Muzan acknowledged the danger of piercing attacks now that his vital organs are laid out like a roadmap. Igoro manages to grab some eyesight seals to help out with his blindness and Muzan complains more about his fatigue and the onslaught continues. 40 minutes till dawn. Yikes. Oh, and Nezuko's here. Hooray. Not only that, we can see her human transformation has begun and she's reverting, one eye at a time. Now let's talk predictions. Igoro dies. Snake boy is dead man walking. Dead man slivering? He's done alright. There's no way he will be sharing the glory at the end. This is a touching brother and sister reunion to save the world, and speaking of Nezuko, she's gonna die as well. You heard it here first, Muzan will absorb Nezuko with the intention of perfecting his immortality and provide him resistance to the effects of the sun. But unbeknownst to him, with Nezuko's human form restored, the demon curse of Muzan will fade from him and he will either fall from the effects of accelerated age or be sliced up by Tanjiro. And that's it for this week's chapter, let me know in the comments below your predictions for next week. This was Anime Fried Chicken, I cover Demon Slayer and Black Clover weekly and do all sorts of anime discussion videos through the week. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time, cheers.